this is a very brief overview. This is not an in-depth session. Uh, yesterday, I think someone gave a workshop that was like three different sessions going really um, deep into GitHub Actions and all the different things that you can do with it. This is just an introductory session, um, just kind of letting you know what's available and uh, what's out there. So my name is Sue Malomo. I'm a developer at HappyCog. I spoke at All Things Open a couple of years ago. Uh, it's one of my favorite conferences. I'm so excited to be back. And uh, I think Todd and the entire team do such a great job. And I'm so grateful that these types of conferences are available. Um, I've been a developer for a long time now, and I've worked with all different technologies, uh, backend, front end, PHP, Laravel, uh, Vue, React, React Native, um, things like that. I never really spent a lot of time thinking about the infrastructure. Um, you know, managing the Git repository or the server setup or the deployment strategy. So when I first set up a GitHub action, uh, it was like magic. I could focus on just writing the code and committing to my feature branch and merging that into staging. And I didn't have to think about how I'm going to get the files up onto the server. How am I going to make sure that everything runs smoothly? Um, it was really great and you can focus your time and energy um, on writing and improving the code. So CI, CD, you hear these terms thrown around a lot. Um, it is uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. Uh, the part that we're going to focus on is the deployment end of the CI, CD, um, but the continuous integration is the process of integrating new code into a shared repository like GitHub. And you can run automated tests to make sure that there's no conflicts. Um, so if you're writing your code, pushing it into your feature branch, you merge that into staging, um, you can run automated tests right there to make sure that you catch any conflicts or anything that broke um, before it gets pushed to production. The continuous deployment side um, is the automated deployment of code to the server. So once you've written your new features and you've merged it in, if you made sure everything is uh, working properly, you can automate the deployment of the code to the server. And GitHub Actions can help automate that part of your workflow. Um, there are thousands of GitHub Actions in the marketplace that you can use in your own workflow. Um, you can write your own actions. You can just write the script that you want it to run. Um, so the possibilities are pretty much unlimited of what you can do with GitHub Actions. Uh, you have an event and you have an action that is triggered. So the event could be anything from pushing a commit to a specific branch and the action could be running automated tests. You could um, have the event be opening a pull request and the action could be sending a notification to Slack to let your team know that there's a pull request open that needs to be reviewed. When you merge the pull request in, you could have it deploy your code to the, the server, either production or staging. And um, we'll get into that a little bit later. If a release is tagged, you could have the action send out a tweet on your behalf to let your customers know that there's a new version available. Um, there's literally thousands and thousands of actions out there um, that already somebody else already wrote and you can use them in your workflow. And again, you can write your own and customize your own. So the possibilities are pretty much unlimited for what they can do for you. There's many integrations available. Um, you can use Docker and AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Uh, Cloudflare is one of the examples we're gonna take a look at today. Um, you can run your code on Windows. Linux, Mac OS, um, you can have it integrated with Jira or Sentry, uh, Jenkins, there's 
lot of different possibilities here um, that are available to you. So getting started with GitHub Actions, you're going to create a YAML file under a directory that GitHub and workflows directory. That's where it will look for them. And the first thing you need to do is decide what event you want to trigger this workflow. Again, it could be pushing a commit to a particular branch. It could be tagging a release. It could be something like opening a new issue in the repository or someone commented on an issue. Um, you just decide which event will trigger the workflow. Uh, it can also be a scheduled event, sort of like a cron job. Then you're gonna create a job and you're gonna specify the runner environment. You can do self-hosted runners, um, but you can also have it run on, like I mentioned, Windows, Linux, or Mac. And then you're gonna list out the steps of the job. And you can have multiple steps um, and you're going to include any third-party actions that you're going to use. You can include environment variables and you can have sensitive data like your API keys or any security tokens or passwords. Those can be stored as GitHub secrets and you can pull those in um, as needed. You can also have conditionals. So um, only run this step if this condition is met, um, which is really helpful. And we'll use that in our first example. So this is a basic deploy script uh, for deploying a React site with Cloudflare workers. Um, so right at the top, we've given our YAML file a name and uh, we decided the event that was gonna trigger this is when um, something is pushed to either production or staging. Those are the only two branches that we care about for this workflow. Um, so if a new commit is pushed or something is merged into staging or production, then this workflow will be triggered. Our first job is called deploy. And we are going to run it on the latest version of Ubuntu. We don't need anything fancy for this particular uh, job. So we're just gonna use Ubuntu, uh, our first step um, is called building the site for production. We're going to pull in this uses line right here. We're pulling in uh, another action called checkout, and that allows us to check out a branch um, and use that in our workflow. So right here underneath the name, we have the if statement. That's our conditional. So we're only going to run this step if the branch that triggered this workflow is production. And that github.ref allows you to refer to whatever it is that triggered this workflow to run. It could be a branch, it could be a tag, it could be uh, the comment or the issue. So github.ref will allow you to reference whatever it is that triggered this workflow. So if in our case, if the branch is production, then we want to run yarn install, yarn add, and yarn build. Our next step is we're gonna publish that. We're gonna deploy that code to production. So again, we put in the conditional to make sure only run this if the branch that triggered this was production. We're gonna use a third party action from Cloudflare we're going to use their Wrangler action, which will actually take care of the deploy for us. And this with statement right here allows us to pass along variables to the action. In this case, we're going to send our API token, which is stored in a GitHub secret. We're also going to send along the name of the environment that it should be deployed to. And in this case, it's going to be production. Our next step is very similar to the first, but except we're gonna do it for Sandbox. And that's the name of our staging environment in this case. So if the branch was staging, 
then we're going to run yarn install, yarn add, and yarn build for staging. The last step we have here is we're going to publish to the sandbox. And again, we check if the branch is staging. We're using that same Cloudflare Wrangler action. Um, and it got cut off here, but we are sending the same API token. And the environment in this case would be staging or sandbox. So that was a very simple uh, workflow, two different conditionals, and um, we are building and deploying the code all in the same workflow. As it's running, you can uh, in GitHub look at the log files. So while it's running, you can actually see each step being um, executed. And if there's any output from those, you can view those. And here, this was the output from um, a commit to staging. And we know that because right here, these two uh, build site for production and publish for production were skipped because of those conditionals. You can also see how long each step took to execute. And if any of these steps failed, you would see a red X instead of that check mark. Um, and you'd be able to click on this and get the details of that particular step. So you can see exactly what happened, what the failed uh, step was. The next example we're going to look at is a little bit more complex. Um, so we're going to take a step back from GitHub Actions for just a minute. And uh, we're going to talk about deploying a React Native app. Uh, if anyone's ever worked with the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store um, to deploy an app before, you know that it's not quite just as simple as getting your code onto a server and knowing that it's available for, um, for everyone to see. So there's a couple of pain points, um, one of which being managing your certificates for the App Store. You have a limited number of distribution certificates available. So if you're working with a team and you onboard a new developer, um, you may end up having to revoke someone else's certificate so that they can build and distribute um, your app to the App Store. There can sometimes be conflicts when you're building on different environments when you're working on a team. Um, building an app for iOS, um, it's very dependent on the version of Xcode. So if I upgrade to the latest version of Xcode and I build the app for production, um, sometimes another developer on the team who hasn't upgraded to Xcode won't be able to build it. Um, so couple different pain points there. There is uh, an open source set of tools called Fastlane, which helps automate the build and deploy, deploy process for iOS and Android apps. Um, it's a great set of tools and uh, it's open source, like I said, so just a fantastic um, set of functionality that is constantly being updated and added to and new integrations. And we'll take a deeper look at that a little bit later. But one of their features uh, is called Fastlane Match. And that allows us to use a shared developer certificate for the iOS build. So we don't have to worry about how many developers are on the team and making sure that everybody's certificate is up to date. Um, you can use one shared developer certificate and it gets stored in a private repository that we can then pull in and use during our workflow. Fastlane also has uh, what they call lanes, where you list out the actions or the steps um, that you want it to take as it builds your app. And again, any sensitive data like API keys, passwords, um, that private repository, those can be stored as GitHub secrets, and we can use those in the workflow. So once you have Fastlane installed, um, you want to set up Fastlane Match. And uh, it helps with code signing. Um, they have a whole section on their site documenting the process and uh, helping you troubleshoot what might have gone wrong if you're uh, running into issues. 
but basically you store your private keys and certificates in a Git repo, and then you can use those across multiple machines. So even if we weren't using GitHub Actions for the deploy, this Fastlane match allows different developers on a team to build the app using that shared repository, which makes it very easy to onboard new developers and help set up Mac, uh, new Mac machines. Um, it's secure, it's a private repo. So if everybody on your team has access to that private repo, they then have access to that certificate. Um, we're gonna take a look at using Fastlane for iOS in these examples. It's also available for Android um, and they have separate documentation for both sides. Uh, the one we're gonna look at today is for iOS. And this is in Fastlane. Uh, I mentioned they have what they call lanes and you can use it to do um, any number of things with your app. Um, in this example, we have a lane called release and you can have it automate capturing screenshots so that they can be uploaded to the app store. Um, we're gonna do our code signing, building the app. Uh, you can send it uh, which scheme you wanna use in Xcode. If you have one for um, release, one for debugging, um, you can tell it right there which scheme to use when building. Then you can have it uh, upload to the App Store automatically. And then uh, in this example, they have a Slack message um, successfully uploaded a new App Store built. So that's all within Fastlane. Looking at the GitHub workflow for this, um, again, we're only looking at building for iOS right now. Um, so we have a build iOS YAML file. And in this example, uh, instead of pushing to a branch as the trigger, we're gonna use a new tag was created. So basically a new version of the app, we tag that release um, and that will trigger this GitHub workflow. When you're building uh, an iOS app, it needs to run on a Mac. So we're gonna specify Mac OS 10.15 as the runner that we're gonna use. And our first step is we're gonna trigger a notification to Slack when this workflow starts. The build process and upload process can take um, upwards of an hour. So we'll send it a notification to a Slack channel and that will just let everybody know we've started the workflow um, and then we can keep an eye on it. And in here um, with the GitHub Action Slack Notify, um, we're using that from the marketplace. We send it the name of the channel that we wanna use, uh, a status, a color, um, and in our environment, we're sending over our uh, Slack bot token, which is stored in a GitHub secret. Continuing in the same workflow file, um, we're gonna pull in that checkout action. And the first step we're gonna do is log the different runner software versions. So this will help us um, in the log files. If something goes wrong, we know exactly which version that we're working with and we can make sure that that's not an issue. So we log out the versions of what we're using on the runner and then we set up those SSH keys and the known hosts. And that allows us to use that shared uh, private repository for the shared certificate. This part was uh, probably one of the trickiest parts when setting up the workflow, um, getting that SSH and the private key, uh, getting all that working, and adding it to the known hosts. Um, so plenty of documentation out there, um, lots of tutorials and, and things like that um, for using uh, Fastlane Match, the shared repo and GitHub Actions. And continuing in the same workflow file, we are caching as much as we can in this workflow um, to try to speed it up and just uh, reduce the amount of time that this needs to run. 
So first thing we do is cache the yarn dependencies. Um, then we cache the cocoa pods and the Xcode derived data. And you'll see through here, um, you know, the runner OS, these are all GitHub variables that we can pass in um, and use in our workflow. Next up, we have the actual uh, fast lane step. And we specify all our different variables that can be used. We have our SSH, the match repo, which contains that shared certificate, our password, um, Apple ID, team ID, our Fastlane user, uh, the Fastlane session so that it can use the um, certificate that we've already set up. And we have an Apple application specific password that we'll use when um, uploading this to the App Store. These things are all stored in GitHub Secrets. So that's a secure way of um, making sure that your workflow has access to these values without putting them into a repository directly. And the only thing that gets run here is this last line, uh, Fastlane beta. And that is in our Fastlane file. Uh, and that's in the iOS directory. Um, so this workflow, we set up all of our variables. Uh, we tell it the working directory should be in the iOS directory. And then we run Fastlane beta. And Fastlane takes over from here. And the beta is a lane that we set up um, telling it to uh, build the app and upload it to the App Store. Finishing up here, um, we set up a, if the workflow fails for any reason, we'll send a failed notification to Slack. And um, again, we're passing through our Slack bot token through a GitHub secret. And if it succeeds, we'll send a success notification to Slack. We pass through uh, the channel, the success message, um, and our secret. Any questions at this point, um, you can put them into the Q&A. Uh, I see one in the chat. Will I be sharing the slides? Yes, I'll send them to All Things Open. And uh, I believe my understanding is they're gonna make all the slides and the recordings uh, available after the, the uh, conference. So just as a summary, uh, GitHub Actions are included in your GitHub account, as long as it's not one of the legacy accounts that where you paid per repository, um, you have included uh, three minutes in um, any other account. There are uh, thousands of actions available in the marketplace that you can pull in and use, and we'll take a look at those in just a second. Um, you can also customize your own actions. Just a reminder to manage sensitive data like API keys or passwords using GitHub secrets. And then uh, there's a link there to GitHub features and actions. Okay, so uh, this is the GitHub Actions page. Like I mentioned, you get uh, public repositories have free, um, they call they are charged by minutes um, and that's how long your workflow takes to run. When I mentioned, you could see that in the log file and um, this is where the importance of caching whenever you can comes into play, especially when doing um, an Xcode build. Um, so the free accounts, you get 2,000 minutes per month. Uh, pro, you get 3,000. And those minutes are rated differently based on the runner that you're using. So uh, if you're using a Linux, it's 0 0.008 uh, per minute. Windows is a little bit more. Uh, the Mac OS minutes are you know, 10 times that of a Linux machine. So again, caching whatever you can. Um, can save you some minutes and uh, help out 
in your budget if that's an issue. Uh, but for public repositories for open source, the runners are free. They have a lot of great documentation here um, for GitHub Actions. And they also have, um, this is the marketplace that I mentioned. Uh, so it looks like we have 5,717 actions available. These are the different categories. Uh, so depending on what you're looking to do, you can come in here and um, you know, if you want to look at continuous integration, you can narrow those down and take a look. Um, lots of AWS actions available. They have Docker, um, Azure, and if you're looking at deployment, you can come over here and see all the different deployment actions that are available for you to use. Um, again, you can just pull these in just like I did with the Cloudflare worker. Uh, someone else has written it and you just, you can utilize those in your own workflow. There's also a lot of testing and this is one of the areas that didn't really get into with this particular session, um, but part of the continuous integration in your workflow. Um, there's a lot of different testing actions that you can pull in and use. Looking at uh, their documentation, they have some great guides here. They have a quick start where they give you a sample workflow and um, you can get up and running pretty quickly. They also have um, specific guides for everything uh, from testing with different technologies Python, Java, Node. Um, they also have um, managing complex workflows, sharing your workflows with your organization, security, um, migrating from another CI CD platform. Um, those are some of the guides. Just want to, uh, I mentioned Cloudflare workers. This is one of the ones that I uh, used for uh, deploying that React app. Um, so this integrated really seamlessly and um, it's very easy to deploy for different environments. I also mentioned uh, these Fastlane tools for building and releasing mobile apps. Um, this is a really fantastic resource. Um, like I mentioned, it's open source and uh, it really helps simplify the Android and iOS deployment process. There's a lot of different automations that you can take advantage of. Uh, I mentioned automating the screenshots, uh, deploying to your um, beta testers, whether you use TestFlight or um, any of the other options that are out there. Uh, you can also deploy to the app store and manage any of your uh, data for your app, publishing a new release. Um, and like I mentioned, it manages the code signing for you. Um, and again, they also have some great documentation, um, great community support. Uh, so if you're doing anything with mobile apps, uh, highly recommend taking a look at these. It makes the process, especially if you're working on a team of other developers uh, makes that process much, much easier. Um, let's see, a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, how do these GitHub actions compare to Jenkins pipelines? Are there scenarios when using one is better than the other? Um, it's an excellent question. And if we go back here to GitHub actions in the marketplace, uh, you'll actually see that it's not necessarily one or the other. Um, there are some actions, let's get rid of the testing filter. Um, there are some actions where you can integrate GitHub workflows with Jenkins. Um, so it doesn't have to be a one or the other, and it might depend on your specific need for your project. 
uh, but you can use GitHub Actions to actually trigger Jenkins jobs. Um, so depending on what you need, you've got the flexibility there. Any other questions? Um, ran through that a little bit quickly. I'm sorry if I spoke too fast. Um, but that's all I had to cover for today. Um, and again, I'll have some of these links are in the slides. So once the slides are um, available through All Things Open, um, you'll have access to those. But I'll put some of these in the chat as well.